Banjo or Sally? Banjo. Banjo. Nicholas is a delightful child. He's very happy. He's always easygoing. He never gives me a hard time when I examine him. He's just a really great kid. He's a lovable little boy, entertainer, just a great little kid, you know, and we love him to death. Nicholas was a patient of mine first in 2004. There were some concerns about his development and he had a minor heart defect, so he was referred to genetics to see if we could find an underlying explanation. He was just poor feeding, he wasn't eating real well, and he was just, just small and, and yeah. low-toned. Hi Nicholas, how are you today? I saw him probably every couple of years from 2004 until last summer, and uh, we sent a number of different genetic tests, all of which came back negative. A lot of people were calling him the Nicholas Syndrome because yeah. we had no answers. Collectively, our genes are the instruction books for how our bodies grow and develop and how they function. Genes are made into protein, and the protein is what carries out the function of the gene. If a gene is disrupted, that can affect the way that the body grows and develops. We know pretty well that different genetic disorders are caused by disruptions in specific genes. We went in for our pretty much our annual, annual checkup with Dr. Keegan, and she was excited. Her, the genetic counselor, they were talking about this new gene testing. In my head, I was almost thinking, here we go again. Here, okay, <laughs> here's another one. Clinical sequencing is a laboratory technique that allows us to look at the chemical structure of a gene and learn more about it. Originally, we had a technology that allowed us to look at individual genes, but through some newer technologies, we can look at large numbers of genes or even all 20,000 genes. We look for variants or changes in the sequence that differ between individuals, both in affected individuals and unaffected individuals. They were just so excited about it. I have never seen them that excited about yeah. uh, the new test. I remember the everything. percentage came back pretty low, though. The published studies are about 30% of patients. In our group, we're probably approaching closer to 50%. The test itself is less than a teaspoon of blood from the patient. And for many of the tests, we also get blood samples from the parents at the same time. Testing is done in a certified laboratory. And the test results may take anywhere from weeks to months for them to come back. When a variant is found in the laboratory, the laboratory will look at the various databases to see if the variant has ever been seen before, if it's been seen in an unaffected individual or an affected individual, and the parent samples, if available, can be checked to see if the variant was inherited or brand new in the patient. Ultimately, the variant is classified as either pathogenic, meaning that it's likely to cause disease, benign, meaning that it's not likely to cause disease, or if we're not sure, it can be called a VUS, or variant of uncertain significance. Some common conditions that are caused by genetic variants include things like autism, cystic fibrosis, a cleft lip and palate, sickle cell anemia, or sometimes a heart birth defect. When the report finally pops up and when it says positive and it tells you the gene and what the variant is, it's actually quite exciting to finally have the answer. We were camping and I got a call from yes. Dr. Keegan's office and um, they said we want you to come in. It was one of our first positive test results and I knew that they had waited such a long time to find the diagnosis. We went in and they told us that he had FG syndrome. FG syndrome is a syndrome that has multiple medical associations. Things like developmental delay and cognitive impairment, there can be some minor heart defects. Hydrocephalus can be present as well. We looked at syndromes before, and it was like, yeah, there's a couple things here, but all of a sudden, FG was, it, it was Nick. We also had some information that Jeanette had a brother who passed away. When I got the results back, I actually went back and looked at the family history, and it was clear that her brother had probably had this syndrome as well and had passed away as an infant. When I told my mother that, it kind of it put some closure to it because she never knew what was wrong with him. We found another variant in Nicholas. It's something called an incidental finding, and it's in a gene that 
has been found to cause a type of heart problem called long QT syndrome. And his mother carried the same thing as well. That made me very anxious with that syndrome because it is a sudden cardiac arrest. And I also had you know, two other children where they could possibly have this too. Incidental findings are variants that we detect on our uh, next generation sequencing tests that aren't related to the patient's condition. These changes are thought to be important, however, because they're in genes that do affect health concerns that we could potentially screen for or manage. Some of these genes may uh, be responsible for predisposition to cancer syndromes or uh, certain cardiovascular conditions. I had my other two kids with me, so we went straight down to the lab and got their blood drawn to see if they had the long QT but it takes a while to get those results back. So we didn't know if we should sign them up for football, should we wait? Because these conditions aren't already present in the patient, the patient may not want to know about these other conditions if they do exist. They may wish to wait until they have any symptoms. They may not want to have a diagnosis hanging over them. Went from something, I think, scary and worried about it to it's actually kind of good to know. Also, that may have insurance implications, for example, with life insurance or disability insurance. We were in the process of getting life insurance, and I got it just in time. If a variant is not found on whole exome sequencing, it does not mean that a person doesn't have a genetic condition. In exome sequencing, we're only covering about 1 to 2 percent of the genome. It's only the protein coding regions. So there are probably changes outside of those regions that are important that we don't understand yet. We expect our knowledge about any variants that are found to continue to increase. And so the data can be looked at again in the future to see if we learn more information about any of these variants. We have a lot of patients that we are unable to find a diagnosis for. And I always found that very frustrating because I know that that's what the families really want is to have an answer for their child's underlying condition. I think the whole idea of not knowing was a, a fear itself. You worry if, how long he's going to live. You worry about what kind of problems he's going to have, if he's going to be able to live a normal life, if he's going to be able to become independent. To be able to go to a place that specializes in something like this and can actually give you a chance for answers, it's worth it. I just think it's incredible to know. What do you want to say to all your fans? I love you.